Excuse me, Teddy. Do you have anything to say about your protracted absence from YouTube? Your fans have been, your, your butt's in my face. Your fans have been wondering where you've been. Have you nothing to say? Am I touching your stuff? Okay, well remember that the next time you're touching my stuff. Okay, as long as we're clear on that. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and I make videos about health and fitness and all of those things, endurance sports, so if that's something that you're into, the buttons, man, they've been down there in the same spot for 15 years. You can find them, I know you can, hit them. I would appreciate it. I'm not gonna tell you what to do because I'm not your mom. You don't want any part of that, trust me, something wrong with this, okay? Thanks for coming anyway. I appreciate you. And the buttons, right down there. But it has been a minute since I have made a video and thank you for those of you who have kind of reached out and well wishers, I'm trying to catch up on comments at this point and people have been asking when I'm coming back. I appreciate all of the thoughts. Uh, you know, cue the typical YouTuber excuses here. Life is so busy and oh my God, it's so hard. <sighs> you know, shit happens. And life has been busy. Work has been 100 miles an hour in a 40 mile per hour zone. You know, that's my, my first priority is paying the bills, right? I got a lot of projects coming to fruition in the next four weeks. It's crunch time, but that really is a smaller part of a, a bigger issue here. And I wanted to share it on this channel because it speaks to the theme of this channel being health and fitness. And it speaks to an important subject and that is dealing with setbacks and psychology and fear. And I wanna kind of share some of my experience and my thoughts because this is something that is going to affect every single one of you that puts your hat in the ring for endurance sport. Whether you are brand new or you have been around for decades, every single one of us is going to be faced with setbacks that are gonna put us back on our heels or completely on our ass at some point or another. It could be injury, it can be illness, it could be you know life priorities, work, family, whatever that might be. You are not going to have a constant upward trajectory just in perpetuity until you die. You could have a long string of good luck for sure, but at one point or another, you are going to have to deal with a setback and it is going to be better for you in the long run if you kind of become content with that fact and prepare yourself to utilize some tools to kind of transcend really the psychology that comes with having those setbacks. It can really take a toll on you. I, I am doing a little bit of soul searching uh, at the moment over the past you know, two months of just dealing with these setbacks. And I have a pretty positive outlook on things, but I am struggling with not being where I wanted to be. And, and I just wanna kind of go through what I've been dealing with. You know, I had the big C word, not, not the big C word, I guess, the 2020 C word, the COVID. And I shared that experience with several of you guys out there and, and you guys have all been very supportive to that effect. And the road back to normal has been pretty rocky. Now, there's no reason to be seriously concerned, no serious medical issues, no vascular issues, lung issues, nothing to that effect. But I did kind of tease this a little bit in my initial set of videos where talking about the after effects of a serious virus, it could be the flu, it could be a really bad cold, a sinus infection, whatever it might be, viruses really do ravage the body. And I have been dealing with the after effects of that up until maybe the last couple of weeks, and it's been tough. It really has drawn on my physical stores in the body. And you know, if you've had a virus or a serious illness, you know that you know that immediate immune response where you have the symptoms, the body aches, the fever, the whatever that it might be, a cough, runny nose, you know, that part sucks. And in a short order, you really get past that portion and, and immediately you kind of feel like a million bucks. Right? By contrast, like, hey, I, I don't feel like complete dog shit. I'm feeling great. But then when the dust starts to settle, you realize that you're not quite normal. And this is normal to feel that way, but it is kind of a longer journey. A, a virus takes a lot out of the body. And for me, I was dealing with probably six to eight weeks of just feeling like I was at 60 to 70% of my typical energy stores. And for somebody who lives maybe that typical first world or American lifestyle, where we do a lot of knowledge work, where we're sedentary at work, and then we are sedentary during our you know chosen hobbies, whether it be you know people watch TV, they play video games, or if they're into art or music, 
things that don't have them up and moving around. Not everybody loves endurance sport, right? This isn't a, a judgment or pejorative here. This is just the reality that a lot more people these days are sedentary and they can probably find themselves better equipped to deal with this energy drain than those of us who are in endurance sport because you don't need as much physical energy to do those things. It's calories, right? We burn more calories and we expend more physical energy when we are engaged in sports, things that have our bodies moving around. And when you're at 60 or 70%, that's almost a deal breaker. And I found myself for several weeks just finding it, taking every ounce of strength that I had to get through work and try to do some sort of training. And we're not talking about training in terms of increasing performance. I spent several weeks training just to kind of stop the bleeding to mitigate the losses to fitness, to do what I could to maintain, right? As I was watching my biometrics, that there was a, a real physiological response here, right? This is before COVID. You had some peaks and valleys, but good clusters up here in the green where you know, my body was responding fine. And then there's this period of time here that you can see from the beginning of April into mid-May where there were very few peaks here. I spent a lot of time in the red and the low yellow zone where my body just was not recovering. And I was getting a lot more sleep during this period of time. My body was crying out for extra sleep and I did everything I could to give my body what it was asking for, taking naps. And through that period of time, I was suffering with constant sleep inertia. The feeling that at any point in time that I was ready for a nap and trying to drag myself onto the bike and it wasn't until the past couple of weeks where things really started to normalize not a whole ton of valleys here a lot in the yellow but a lot of that has to do with load and not so much my recovery at this point I really do at this point feel a lot better but dealing with having to force myself to get on the bike. And I did a video back in November of last year that talked about discipline versus motivation. And despite what the you know, YouTube and Instagram personalities will tell you out there, nobody, nobody on the face of the planet feels motivated 100% of the time. We all deal with peaks and valleys. But the weird part about this is that it wasn't a matter of mental motivation. Every time I thought about training and goals and things that I wanted to do in terms of training and all my extracurriculars, I get really excited and I couldn't wait to pursue those things. But when it came to the actual physical energy to execute, it wasn't there. It was just grasping at straws, grasping at nothing. And it took everything I could to get through work days, give it the mental energy that I needed to do what needed to be done to pay the bills and to be a functional member of that team and then try to get some semblance of training. And that's the biggest reason I wasn't making videos. It might not seem like much to sit here and just run my mouth in front of a camera, but it does take a decent amount of mental and physical energy to exude some sense of competence and then you know, put things together and post it, edit it, deal with any kind of comments in the immediate term and try to respond and be engaged with everybody. It was just beyond my capacity for a long period of time. And it has felt really lousy. It was frustrating. I was physically depressed from that lack of energy and it started to give way to some psychological depression and frustration. It's like, am I ever going to feel normal again? It, it really does get scary when you start to count out the weeks, right? The first couple weeks, okay, you know, I get it. This, this is to be expected. No big deal. All right, week three, week four. Come on, man, is, is, is it gonna come back? Weeks five and six, things start to really get a little bit scary. Like you wonder if you'll ever be normal again. That rational part of the brain really starts to turn off. And I, you know, I consider myself very fortunate that I wasn't 100% sidelined with a serious injury, anything that kept me completely away from training. But it really was tough to deal with, you know, the, the thoughts of my my in season, what I wanted to do this year, co going completely down the drain. And to give that some context, I've really wanted to get back into racing a little bit this year. It's been a few years since I've thrown my hat in the ring and towed the line for a race, right? Last year was just a non-starter for everybody. And a couple years prior, I really had to shift my focus from training as a, at the forefront to kind of sidelining that to deal with some career aspirations and family things. I wanted to get back to those things because, you know, I like that feeling. I like the competition. It helps me to reach new heights. It's one of the appeals of racing is not necessarily that you think you're going to be the best, but it helps you to be the best version of yourself. And I had plans to have a three digit, you know, fitness score, CTL. If you haven't, uh, if you don't have the context on that, I will link the video at the end screen here. I talk about what that means in terms of fitness and how that gets gauged to give you a little better context there. But 
I was expecting that by the first event I wanted to do, which is this uh, Saturday, June 19th, that I'd be at a three digit fitness score, that I would have an FTP somewhere kind of tickling on that four watts per kilogram mark. And I'm just not there. I'm probably at about 3.75 to 3.8. And for more context, that's kind of where I was at or close to on April 1st. Right? I really haven't made any serious gains there. I just recently recuperated my fitness score. I just passed that benchmark maybe a few days ago. So I've spent the last two months really treading water. Now I've made some improvements where I'm focusing more on kind of like a specialty phase of my training where I'm working more of my repeatability, my VO2 max and anaerobic zones. And those are working well and I'm pushing back into more endurance and adding more volume over the last couple weeks and things are coming around in pretty short order. But when I kind of look at, at the whole of the last eight weeks, almost at face value, it looks like I've done nothing. And this is where it comes to the psychology and where it can really set you back and you have to be prepared for it because I find myself fighting this inclination that's not rational to look at this event coming on Saturday and get caught up in the analysis paralysis and realizing that I am not you know, race fit as I had really defined it in the beginning of the season. All of those best laid plans that I had in February and March and where I wanted to go with my training and what my A events and B events were going to be, I'm not there. And that could really set me back. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough. I shouldn't, you know, I, I'm not worthy of racing, right? How embarrassing it might be if a, a result is gonna be poor, if I get dropped, I just shouldn't even bother, right? And, and that's a really bad attitude to have. And I know this is what happens to a lot of people because they get caught up into thinking that they are not worthy, that they're an imposter, that they shouldn't be racing, but there's no minimum benchmark to racing. And if you're not racing, even if you're trying to join a Fondo or a group ride or a group event, whatever it might be, any number of those things fit that same paradigm where you just feel like you count yourself out before the beginning because you just, you're waiting to meet some kind of criteria in your head that, that would denote readiness. Maybe if my power was just 10% better, then I'm gonna be ready. Or maybe if my sprint was just this much better, then I'm gonna be ready. Well, maybe if my fitness score was just here, then, then I'll be ready, I I'll do it then. And then you never do it because you always kind of raise that bar. And I catch myself thinking, you know, I'm not gonna be ready for this race. And because I can't win, or I think that I can't win, What's the point? Because that's the point of racing, right? Is to win. So there's no reason to do it. But that's not the exclusive purpose to doing events and racing. It's to also get that experience and to be a student of the process and to learn and to realize where your limitations are. You know, maybe some of you are thinking about racing. You found my videos through Zwift and maybe you've done some Zwift races out there and you get a little bit comfortable uh, dipping your toe in the water. You have some decent anonymity and there's so many events out there and there's so many variables that you just kind of get lost in the shuffle. So it's a little bit easier to jump in those things. And now you're trying to measure yourself against equally able people out there and you're thinking, all right, you know what, I can kind of hold my own in these events. Maybe it's time for me to take it into the real world and participate in some kind of challenge, time trial, race, whatever it might be. But then you start to second guess yourself, right? Now this is real world implications. People can see my face. They can see my real name. I can't obscure any of that. And, and what if I do badly? Everybody's gonna laugh at me because I got dropped. And I think the same thing but then the rational part of my brain knows that nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares, really, nobody cares. Whether you've dealt with a setback or you're just jumping into these things for the first time, if you finish like crap, you could finish dead last. And honestly, nobody cares. In fact, when you win, unless it's like nationals or some kind of serious event, Nobody remembers that a month later. Nobody remembers that you won some kind of local crit. You remember that time that, you know, Joe Smith won this race? Oh my God, that was epic. On balance, nobody really pays attention to the results. And if they are paying attention to other people's results, it's more with reference to yourself. And if you want proof of that, unless you're a complete asshole, if you've been in the racing scene before, when you look at other people, it's more to kind of compare where you stack up. Maybe you look up to a, a racer in your area or a rider in your area and you look at their results, whether it's for racing or a QOM or KOM out there, 
you look at them and you and you gauge you know where you are how much of a gap between you and that person is there is it a few minutes is it a few seconds because you're aspiring to be better you're aspiring to get the best out of yourself you're not looking at the people who finish behind you and say jeez those people suck if you spend any amount of time in this sport, you realize that people's performances on the, the day, they could be subject to anything. Bad luck, it could be a mechanical, it could be, you know, you're just not feeling well that day. Taking a wrong turn, getting stuck behind somebody else, right? Nobody is looking at you and saying, wow, your result sucks, you don't belong there. In fact, if I saw somebody who finished dead last and they could finish 30 minutes behind the, the second to last place finisher, and you know what I think? I think good for them. Good for them because they had enough gumption to finish what they started. I've been in the position where, you know, I haven't been able to win the race. You know, maybe I got dropped off the front group and my coward ass has DNF'd because I didn't want anybody else to see a result. The DNF to me, for some reason in my head, would be better than just finishing fifth or ninth or whatever the hell it would be. And that's just such a piss poor attitude to have. I've regretted it every single time. Now, let me be clear, you know, if, if you can't safely stay in the ring, right, if you're in a crit, it might be safer to just get out of the way. There are good reasons to DNF, whatever that might be. But sometimes I've done it just because I thought that my result was gonna look worse than a DNF. But what's even worse than that is not even trying to begin with. Every single person who toes their line for an event, a race, a challenge, that person already is a winner because they put themselves out there. Whether you're coming back from an injury or an illness or just getting into this for the first time, just do it. The only way you learn to be better at these types of challenges is to just do it, to learn the tactics, to learn the strategy, to learn how to, to mitigate your weaknesses. You know, if you've ever raced before, you know it's not always the strongest person who wins. It is the person who can play the field or play the course to their advantages and slow down the least. I'm telling you, it, there's no reason to think that you can't win just because you're not the strongest person in the field. And using that rational thought process to overcome some of the analysis paralysis and the imposter syndrome, I'm telling you, it, it's going to pay out dividends in terms of your experience and your overall ability with time. The more you expose yourself to you know, some of that anxiety, some of that fear, some of those doubts, the better off you're going to feel in the future. And then it's just going to become second nature. You'll see people in the scene that just love to race, first place or last. They don't care. They love to be in it. The nerves will start to subside. That anxiety will start to subside. You just have to do it no matter what the situation is. But it's all well and good to talk about you know, some of the mentality and overcoming anxiety when it comes to something that's really event or goal focused. Most of us can probably muster up the impetus to just pull the trigger and do it. But how do you deal with the more general effects of the setback? You know, How do you deal with more of the short term stuff? And it's really tough for me to say unequivocally for each one, everybody's gonna have a different scenario, right? You might be injured and it could take you completely away from your training. In my case, it was illness. So it was kind of some hybridized, you know, I, I was able to maintain some semblance of fitness, but I had to deal with setbacks in other ways, right? The immediate term is going to be different for every single person. But what I can say is that the farther you are removed from that kind of peak state that you are at, the more time you have to sideline yourself from training, the harder it's going to be because you're going to deal with that diminishment of your fitness, right? It's just common sense. The longer you go without training, the more your fitness is going to suffer, but the harder it is going to be mentally to get back into the swing of things, right? A day or two, not a big deal. You just get back into it, not a big deal to be sidelined for a couple days. A week, okay, you'll struggle a little bit, but most people don't need a whole lot of coaxing to get back into the swing of things after a week. A couple weeks, a month, now things start to get difficult, especially if you haven't had any exposure to what you're doing. Now, sometimes people have the itch to get back into what they're doing, but sometimes that, you know, that time away from your sport can become habitual. And when you get back into the things, it's painful. It hurts. Your breathing is labored. Your heart rate is way higher. You feel like you've lost all of your fitness and it can be really discouraging. But that's where you have to dip back into that discipline and habit because I promise you, if you just kind of stick with it and, and deal with some of those short-term losses, you will make your way back. When you have spent time training and focusing on things like good nutrition and recovery over time, when you 
are dealing with those setbacks, it, it doesn't actually take as long to get back as you would think. You've got that mitochondrial density and the, the nucleus of your muscles are a lot more dense and a lot more responsive to training. And the best thing I could tell you to focus on is those gains, right? Maybe you just reset those PRs. Don't compare yourself to who you were six months ago at your peak. Compare yourself to where you're starting today. Maybe today's the first day that you are getting back on the bike or back in the run. Okay, where are you today? Where's your power peak numbers for you know five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it might be. What is your pace right now? Okay, that's your new PR starting today. And you'll see that in very short order over time, you are going to see big percentages of increases as you reacclimate yourself to training and performance. And those are the things that you might need to focus on, those small wins in the short term. And before you know it, you'll feel a lot better. It is a good time to rebuild yourself as a stronger athlete than you were before. Deal with some of those vulnerabilities, whether it's technique, general recovery, maybe healing up some of those niggles that you kind of let fester for a long period of time. You have to deal with setbacks for sure, but there's a way to make the best out of them. And it's not just this trite, oh, just make the best out of life, right? Nobody wants to hear that shit. It doesn't work, but there are ways to maximize on the outcome in terms of performance, even on the, on the heels of a setback. But this is by no means intended to be a faux motivational video of me blowing smoke up your ass. I am sharing real world experience and feelings that I've dealt with in the past, that I'm dealing with right now, and I'm inevitably going to have to deal with in the future. The only regrets that I've had in terms of my training, other than you know not taking Teddy on the bike because he likes to race, uh, are the events that I didn't sign up for in, because of fear the races or rides that I've DNF'd because I thought my results would be embarrassing. You know, shout out to my friend Linda on Zwifting with Granny. If you haven't checked out her, her channel, I'm gonna link that below because you know, why would you not? She's talked to this before in the past when she's done racing, she's done the same thing. This is really common. Everybody's thought about it and almost everybody's done it. And those are the regrets you carry. So if I can give you one piece of actionable advice, think about the things that you've regretted, things about, think about the experiences that you haven't availed yourself of and, and take advantage of those now. It's never too late to kind of pick up where you left off. There are events and races for every ability, for every age group of, out there. I don't care if you're dealing with setbacks or you are brand new and you're feeling a little bit of that uh, trepidation around whether or not you're worthy of being there. I'm telling you that you are. So please, 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 don't count yourself out of those experiences. I'm holding myself accountable in this video. If people actually sign up, there are no women signed up for this race yet this weekend, which is a completely different issue that I wanna work on in my local area. But I'm gonna get off my ass and I'm gonna race this Saturday. Is my result gonna be good? Probably not, but you know what? I'm gonna get into it and barring any kind of severe bad luck, I'm gonna finish. I don't care if I finish first or dead last. I gotta practice what I preach, get out there and do it. The only people who give a shit about my results are me and the people who care about me as a person who are on balance very supportive people. So just do it. And in that regard, I've gotta spin out the legs. It's been a big weekend, so I'm gonna jump out for an easy cruise out there. I hope that you guys are enjoying your training. Thank you guys for the well wishes yet again. I've got a lot of good ideas in terms of training videos and Zwift videos coming up here soon. So bear with me, next couple weeks are gonna be a little busy, but I'm going to do my best to get some videos out there for you guys. If you got any value out of this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It does help the channel and the video quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comments, questions, concerns, as always, down below. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. See ya.